Hi everyone, hope you are all doing well today. Today I'm going to delve into a personal project that I have been working on for a while. It's based around pain caves. A pain cave is effectively a space where someone has an indoor bike set up. They train indoors on the bike. So something like a Peloton or Zwift or just a plain old bicycle on a turbo train. It's something that I am personally interested in and uh, maybe like six weeks ago I was just falling asleep and I've been racking my brains for a personal project to do especially as everyone is in lockdown. So it's a series of portraits. I've shot 15 different people so far, 16 if I include myself. I have visited them and documented their indoor space and it's really made for a nice series of photographs. It is time now to get into the retouching and I will basically give you a rundown of what I've shot so far and then we'll take one image from a raw image into Photoshop, retouch it, and you guys can uh, watch along with me. But first, before we get into that, I think I need a hot beverage to accompany me on today's editing. Let's go. Here we are. So let me give you a little glance over the project thus far. If I bring up InDesign here. So here we are. Let me give you a quick overview. So this is Stephen. Stephen runs the London Branch Club. I've actually met him on, on a different job and I had seen on his Instagram that he was getting more and more into indoor cycling. So I just reached out to him and asked if he would be involved. So quite a cool setup. Set up in their spare room, which I think was meant to be a working from home office that turned into a bit of a pain cave. Uh, this is Richard who has one of the Wahoo kicker bikes, which are really cool. This is like a turbo trainer on steroids basically. And that is his pain cave in his garden. These are some portraits of Tim. I actually shot Tim in his workshop. He's a bike fitter and a high level cyclist. So it was interesting uh, to see a different setup. So Andrew is a neighbor of mine and has a really cool setup in his flat if I just click along here. So the flat that he lives in is kind of narrow. That is very typical of London and I really wanted to get that range in the project. You can see at the top there, you can still see my uh, softbox uh, umbrella up here. That is something that I will need to attend to in retouch. Getting people sweating was a big part of this project. If you've ever trained indoors, you'll know just how sweaty it gets really quickly unless you've got all windows open and a fan. And Anna's setup is another example of how things are so different. In Anna's house, they've got like this really long kitchen with the bike set up at the end of it. And surprisingly, there were a couple of people who had their bikes set up in the sort of kitchen dining room. Here we have Chris Hall, who rode 107 kilometers a day for 107 days for a charity that he works with. Chris does a lot of endurance rides for different charities and he's raised over a quarter of a million for different charities. So good effort, Chris. Nice one. He's doing lots of stuff for Movember as well. So check him out on Instagram, Chris Hall Rides. Yeah, nice portrait. I like that. And this is the last one I'll get into before I get into the retouch. Gareth has a cycling blog. He used to work with the Sky cycling team because he works at Sky and uh, he handled all the sponsorship and creative, I think, behind Sky. So he has a really interesting blog on all things cycling and indoor training. I found him through Instagram somehow. Again, put in a massive shift. He was so keen for it. He was just like, I'll just hammer it and you can take photos as we go. So you can see we've got a bit of outdoor lighting coming in here and I've just lit Gareth on the other side very softly with a Fotec soft lighter umbrella. These things, they're amazing and uh, they were a big part of this project. And I just really like how it's so soft. It's I wanted to recreate typical indoor ambient lighting but for it to be really nice ambient lighting to kind of tread that fine line between is it lit or is that just really nice indoor lighting. And Gareth's images are the ones that I'm going to get around to retouching today. So let's get into it. Okay, so here we are on Capture One. I've done a walkthrough of my workflow through Capture One before. So if there's anything that's missing here, be sure to check that out. I will link it in the top left there in the cards. Here we have Gareth. So if I go to the raw image, you can see it's quite dark on the inside as it was very bright outside. So I had to balance that a little bit. I guess part of photography, especially when you're using flash, is knowing what your camera is capable of. So not only taking a picture that looks instantly beautiful on the back of the camera, but having the awareness to realize that there is perhaps enough information in the picture to get it to a point where you want when you develop it or when you color grade it. So I've already stuck my grade on here and you can see I've really 
as I've brightened the exposure by 1.18, a full stop in a bit, I've had to pull the highlight back, highlights back and save them because you can see if I didn't do that, the outdoors just gets a little bit too bright and it can get away from us there. So I've really pulled the highlights in. As we saw in the raw image, the side of Garth, which is closest to the camera, is really dark. So I've just opened up the shadows a little bit to give us a bit more information there. So I've pulled the shadows up there because I could bring them back down and get an element of contrast and drama to it. But I just wanted to open them up a little bit. So uh, it's more of a documentary type photographer photographic project as opposed to some of the commercial stuff that I shoot. I hope that makes sense. That's the approach I took with it. And this is the image that we're going to retouch of Gareth today. So the trickiest part of this whole project was balancing your typical indoor ambient light as well as outdoor light. Sometimes you would get a really blue cast from the outdoor light, as you can see here, this is, this is quite blue in the picture. And then you would get quite a yellow indoor light, like you see here, that's made it really yellow. And when you have a subject in between those two sources, it can look really weird. I think I've touched on this in a previous video. Darkening the blacks, I didn't want to go too high with the whites because we're already pulling those in a little bit. And then on the levels, I've just squashed the blacks and whites a little bit. For some pictures, I like that sort of faded look to the black. So if I pull this up here, you can kind of see that uh, just around here on Garth's shorts, it's got like a, a faded look. But uh, for this time in particular, I just wanted to squash them. So looking at this image, there is not actually too much retouching I would want to do. If this is a commercial image or an advertising image, I'd bring it into Photoshop and I would smooth out the skin, get rid of any imperfections, uh, add a little bit of contrast and things like that. There's not too much that I want to do here really to Gareth. Uh, I will bring it into Photoshop just to double check. I'll mess about with it a little bit and see where it brings us. But I think it's going to be a very light retouch today. So here we have Gareth. What do I need to add? I'm not sure I need to actually add anything but I will probably add a little bit of contrast we can see this vein popping out of the side of his head and on his neck if i just emphasize that shadow a little bit it will probably bring us a little bit of drama so what i will do is i will get a, a curves layer here and i will bring it down and that will darken the whole photo now if you're familiar with my retouching videos you know what's coming i'll press command i and that will invert the layer kind of hides it behind it. Now to bring that layer back out, you need to, and because it is inverted, you need to rub it out effectively to bring it back. So I will get my eraser here and I'll probably put that on uh, 20 opacity and 20 flow. And I will just begin, rub that back in. We're just beginning to see a little bit more, bringing in some of the shadows here. And if I zoom out, and we flick that layer off and on, we can just see a little bit of shadowing there. And that for me is probably even a little bit too strong. I'll just bring the fill down a little bit and it's all about subtleties. So what I think I will do now is I'll go and kind of go around the rest of Gareth and emphasize the strain that isn't going through his body. You can see it in his arm muscles here and the way he's gripping the handlebars and I'll just begin to emphasize that a little bit, but not too much. I might just grab another adjustment layer here, bring it up a little bit, just to add a little bit of brightness to Gara's eyes. I'm not retouching it too much, not adding any extra colors or going crazy with the eye retouch, like. Sometimes you see it on Instagram where people have gone mad with their, their retouch and people have these total unrealistic eye colours. Yeah, not for me. Uh, I haven't been renaming my files. I need to rename that eyes high, uh, skin high and skin low. 
just polish it up a little bit, just a little bit, just enough to add a little bit of quality. Here we go, just need to add a little bit of contrast, a little bit of high uh, highlights to the rest of Gareth and we are. Okay, so that was a very quick run through, but I'm very aware that my camera light is, uh, battery light is also flashing. So there we have it guys, a very quick run through in Photoshop. Like I said, I didn't want to do too much uh, retouching to this image. It needs to be more of a reportage style image just emphasizing the existing light that is there, doing my best to help bring our cyclists to life and add drama to the drama that they already run through going through these hellish workouts. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed that. Keep an eye on my Instagram, it's at Photo, and obviously my YouTube channel for more updates on this project. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll speak to you soon.